One of the biggest questions I see is how do I bond with my hamster or how do I get my hamster to like me? Now, if you're coming onto this video expecting a solid answer that is going to tell you how to bond with your hamster in one day, you are sadly in the wrong place. There are no magical or secret tips I'm going to share today. First things first, you cannot compare your hamster to somebody else's hamster. We often will see videos on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok of these hamsters sitting in their owner's hand, letting them pet them, or they fall asleep on their lap, or they even come when called and you're like, I want my hamster to do exactly what that hamster is doing. That's just not likely to happen. Animals are all individuals, so they're all going to have different personalities and your hamster is likely not going to behave the same way another hamster is going to behave with their owner. Another thing I want to touch on is heart pets. And heart pets are essentially a pet that you bring home and almost instantly you have this special bond and connection with them that is on a whole nother level. It's like they're your soulmate pet and you've just never had this type of bond with any other pet. This can of course can happen with multiple pets that you have, but it usually doesn't happen with every single pet you own. When bonding with a new hamster, the first thing I'm always going to recommend is letting them settle in. The amount of days you wait to let them settle in is really going to depend on a bunch of different factors. That is depending on, is the hamster already seeming comfortable with you? Have they already been in a home where they've been interacting with humans? Do they seem really skittish or timid? Have they had any traumatic pasts or have they come from a pet store where they were never handled by any other humans? A hamster who was previously in a home with a family and they're used to humans likely is only going to need a day or two to settle in. Whereas a hamster who is super skittish or had something traumatic happen in their life may need a little bit longer time to settle in. The reason we want them to settle in is because a pet that is acclimated to their environment is going to be much easier to bond with than a pet who has just gone to a new environment and is super overwhelmed. This can cause different reactions like the animal may be so overwhelmed that they try to bite you or they're just hiding away. The next tip kind of goes along with letting them settle in and it is just Getting them used to yourself, the way that you sound, the movements that you make, and your smell. Hamsters have really great sense of smell, so you could just take a little bit of toilet paper, rub it on your hands, put it in the enclosure, and that is just going to help them get used to your scent and it's not going to be something new and scary when you go to put your hand in to the enclosure. You can also sit in the room the enclosure is in or sit right next to the enclosure and just do some normal things like if you read books, go ahead and sit and read a book. You can even read it out loud in a gentle voice so that they start to recognize and get used to your voice. Or you can do some stuff on the computer or do some homework, just something that is going to involve you having to sit next to the enclosure so your presence is there. One of the best tips I can offer is create a routine with your hamster. Structure is really important in any pet's life and when you're creating a routine with your hamster, say you are going in and feeding them at the same time every day or you're going in and changing their water or spot cleaning or doing something that involves their care, your hamster is going to start to learn this routine. They may realize that you come in at a certain time to feed them. So they may even start to be awake a little bit earlier to wait for you to come in and bring that food or bring them a treat. The next tip I have is kind of gonna depend on the hamster and whether or not they are already comfortable coming into your hand. If they don't want to go onto your hand just quite yet, highly would recommend practicing lifting them out of the enclosure with a mug or a measuring cup. 
you can put a treat into there and just hold it below and allow them to climb in and then slowly lift them out of the enclosure and then just put them right back in, let them climb out. This is going to get your hamster used to that feeling of being lifted because they naturally aren't animals that are going to often leave the ground. And the only reason in the wild a hamster is leaving the ground is usually because they are another animal's meal. Once your hamster has gotten used to being lifted from the mug, measuring cup, or even climbing onto your hand, they're going to start associating this as a positive experience because this is when they get to leave their enclosure. They're realizing that, hey, this is the only way that I am able to come out. And so they're going to want to willingly go onto your hand or climb into that mug so that they're able to go somewhere else to explore. A great bonding tool can be snuggle sacks or kind of fabric pouches like the hoodie pockets or if you even wear your sweater backwards and have the hood at the front. These can make really great just tools for bonding with your hamster. If you want to sit with them somewhere, you have kind of like a safe pocket for them to sit in and feel comfortable. It's going to be dark and soft and it's not going to be too open so that they're not going to be kind of too intimidated by the space. Now some hamsters like snuggle pouches and some hamsters don't so this is just going to depend on your hamster but they can be a very helpful tool if you just want to take your hamster out to sit with you. The next tip is one you've probably already heard about and that is bathtub bonding or free roam bonding i'm going to call it this is basically just when you sit in an area that is hamster safe and this allows the hamster to be able to explore but also come up and climb onto you and kind of explore you climb on your legs climb on your arms stomach whatever and get used to you not being a scary thing but rather just something that they don't need to be scared of it is important to note that not every hamster is going to enjoy bathtub bonding or coming out into a open space. It might be too much for a hamster. Um, some hamsters may start showing some erratic behaviors while in the bathtub or free roam. And if you're noticing these things, it's best to bring them back to their enclosure. The next tip is treats. This is gonna be probably one of the best bonding tools that you can use. If you have a picky hamster, I am so sorry. <laughs> it is going to be a lot harder to try and bond with them if they are not willing or wanting to take food or treats from you. But if your hamster is willing to take food and treats from you, this is going to be super duper helpful in bonding with them because feeding your hamster a treat is going to help them recognize you as the bringer of food, which is a positive thing, not a negative thing. You don't necessarily need to use treats to give your hamster every time. Obviously, when you're bonding with your hamster, you're likely to give more treats during this time because you wanna to continue to reward them. And that can start to get a little bit too much. You obviously, treats are meant to be treats, not full-time meals. So instead, you actually can just use really healthy things like you can try dried vegetables or fresh vegetables that are cut into really tiny sections. Or you can just use your hamster's regular seed mix as a treat. This way you can give as much as you want and not have to worry about your hamster getting sick or gaining any weight. And the last tip that I can give is just have time and patience with them. Like I mentioned earlier, you're not going to be able to create an instant bond with your hamster the first day you get them. Or if you do, that is a rare occurrence. It's going to take days, weeks, months, sometimes even years to get a really good bond with your hamster. And you have to keep at it. Definitely don't give up. If you don't interact with your hamster for long periods of time, then they're likely to not bond with you as well. Just a quick editor's note, if you are noticing that your hamster isn't making any improvements with bonding, it is quite possible that you have a ghost hamster. I have a full complete video about ghost hamsters here that you can check out. 
So I hope this video was helpful and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!